There are approximately 100 HBCUs, many of which were established in the mid to late 1800s. And this was during a time where African Americans uh, sought higher education, but HBCUs were the only option. Today, HBCUs are more diverse and uh, educate students of various backgrounds, uh, ethnicities, and majors. HBCUs compose about 3% of our institutions of higher learning uh, in, in this country. However, they contribute and provide um, about one quarter of the bachelor degree STEM holders that we have that are African American. And so although they are small in number, they uh, punch above their weight class uh, and provide an outsized impact in terms of diversifying our STEM workforce. Sandia's strong university partnerships enhance our ability to hire diverse science and engineering talent. Sandia leadership, in partnership with the lab's Black Leadership Council, has created a new program, securing top academic research and talent with historically black colleges and universities. This program is designed to increase research collaborations, to expose students to national laboratory work, and foster relationships with the HBCUs. We are fostering institutional relationships with a subset of historically black colleges that we've chosen based on their areas of expertise that align with Sandia's mission needs. Going to an HBCU prepared me to be effective at Sandia because it allowed me to be me. I didn't have to deal with the pressures of being black, being a female in a predominantly white male career choice. HBCUs, I think, are a very important um, talent pipeline to Sandia because as we know, there's a shortage of, of STEM professionals, especially those from underrepresented groups. And HBCUs are conducting cutting edge research in biotech and nanotech and material science, microengineering, computer science. And that research is, is being performed by some very bright, talented students. There is an incredible recruiting base and there's an incredible research and professorship base for us to be able to tie in with the national laboratories that have a passion for national security and the work we do. I was very impressed with the fact that Sandia investigators were interested in forming these research collaborations with HBCUs. Uh, and what was particularly uh, gratifying to me was the fact that uh, uh, they uh, were starting with the faculty, uh, looking for common interests, common ground in which research collaborations could be formed and therefore have students involved in those research collaborations. The program really offers, I would say, opportunity and exposure um, and networking options um, to some of these schools that, that may not normally have that, to some of the underrepresented minorities there. I mean, we first learned about Sandia through um, some research collaborations that they had at our university. That shows a commitment to the university that we're not just here for your talent, but we're here also to invest back into the capabilities and to the, the, the greatness that is your universities. There have been many programs, you know, over the years that have encompassed HBCUs, but there hasn't really been a program that was intentionally for HBCUs and that in the intent and purpose was through research. The research is in our core, and so we want to make sure that our partners are essential to the core. And so for the first time, we're looking at historically black colleges as essential to Sandia's core. This may be the first time you've heard about HBCUs, but it should not be the last. We need you to get to know these institutions on your own and continue the strides we have made so far by joining recruiting teams, engaging in research collaborations, and in general, get involved. I have been impressed with the uh, quality of education that our interns have from our HBCUs. It also provides us an opportunity to hire from different areas of the country. Sandia is known for hiring the best and the brightest, and we get the best and the brightest from HBCUs.